So let's talk about the menu utility feature for Alan Bradley. And not Alan Bradley, Fanny. Eh. Um, sometimes you want your teach pendant to actually get information from the operator um, while it's in production. Um, and this menu utility feature will allow you to do that. Uh, keep in mind, this is an extra from Fanic, so if you want to play with this, you can play with this, but first you might need to go into um, uh, Robot Controller, where is it? you got to reinitialize a robot, so uh, I just had it here a second ago, which... Double click on the robot, that's easy, and then serialize the robot is what you're going to need to do, and because if you don't have this feature enabled, you're going to need to contact Fanic and get a pack code to enable it. It may cost a little bit, but under, but if you're in RoboGuide, you can enable it. Um, you know, just all you have to do is go under um, basically the robot options. And just click on the box to load it into your system. So um wait uh yeah and it's gonna be it's gonna be the r5577 feature so if i go back one screen went too far you have to go through here the software options and, and excel, make sure that the um r577 is highlighted or selected so I'm not going to do that because I don't want to reload the robot, but that's you go through and re reload, reinitialize the robot, but that's how you get to it. Double click on the robot, click serialize, and you can re-edit it. But basically, what that allows you to do is maybe you're running different jobs and you want to just keep things in production, but you want to get information from the um, operator. You can set this up in a couple of different ways. So under the menu feature um, and under, uh, not utilities, but setup, is the menu utility option. Um, if it's not enabled, this menu utility won't be there, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but I have it enabled, and you get three options of what you want to do. You can do a prompt, and the three that we're going to focus on are probably the first three. Um, that's just you know, what I'm going to choose to do. Uh, the prompt box message, the prompt box yes, no, select select from the list. So here, if I hit, hit enter or detail, you're going to see there's something already selected. If you want to create one, hit create, and you're going to get a number from the 1 to 99. Well, I'm just going to hit 2, and make sure you keep track of this number. And you can then, under here, um, hit enter. And I always go down to the keyboard, and I can type in, um, is this cool? Or is this robot in a safe position? Kind of, uh, kind of has an extra check, or um, wait, let's call it safe because that's the title, and then I put it down here on the text. Enter keyboard. This robot is in an unsafe position. And basically, you gotta just check on this because it'll tell you if you're going too far. So go in here and click on keyboard, double click, and you might need to play around with this just so you can get a you know a good looking um, setup. All right, and now if I test it out, you'll see this drop down box will show up and then I have to hit enter to hit OK. So it's just kind of a way of communicating with the operator. Um, if I hit previous out, we get back to the main thing and I can go into the prompt box. And again, hit detail and I can create, you know, a new thing. I hit three, hit enter. What is this? So, um, you know, load machine. Hit enter, and literally all you have to do is type in, did you, oops, did you load the CNC? And what it will do this time is give you a, a something in here, the text that you just put in, and it gives you a yes or no question that you have to go between. Okay? Next, you know, the, uh, the last one, let me go 
previous, previous. Let's go select from a list, hit enter or detail, create, and again, I'm gonna do three. Give it a name and part selection. And this is meant just to interact with the operator. So if I go here, I can go under number one, options keyboard. Um, oh wait, I forgot, let me go out. Under title is the question that you wanna write. So keyboard, which make do you want to do? And I could go, Circle. <coughs> I could go square. I could go triangle. And then what it'll do if I hit test, which one do you want to do? Circle, square, or triangle? And I get to pick one. So I'll pick three, and then, and so, and you can also put a prompt down at the bottom, like, uh, enter place So now um, if you can see, give more clearance. Uh, uh, guidance, I should say. All right, so now that we have these menus set up, we can go to our job. I'm going to go in, and I'm going to just do this all the same job. And what, where we find these, will be under, where, uh, 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 it'll be under, dang it. would be under um, macros, because these are macros that you run. I kept getting the wrong thing. So here's my prompt message, you know, and I can go in here and which message I want to, you know, go into is, you know, but you normally would just call these like jobs and all the thing you're identifying is which job you, you call. So if I go in here to choice, it's going to tell me which one I want to do. So I'll hit two, enter. And if I run this job here, boom. Um, so if I prompt, so run the job, prompt my message, everything's, but make sure if you're testing this, keep shift down and it's because everything runs like a normal job. Okay. If you want this to take, happen on a certain thing, my recommend is do a jump label over it or, um, call a specific job with this in it. Um, because there's not really a good way to call this separately. Um, because he's get a little bit kind of weird if you start doing other things. So, so there's our prompt box message. You know, that's how you would put it into your job. Um, if I wanted to do that yes no command, here's how I would go about doing it. So I go into, over to macros, and I would look for prompt box yes or no. Um, okay. And now this is where things get a little bit. You you have to know your number. Okay, and then you will need to know what register you want to store that yes, no return to. So if I go into data, let me find one that's not being used in my register. Um, let's make it nice and easy. Let's make it, um, let's make it 23. Let's just make it 23. So if I hit um, back to edit, make this 23. And I, if I run this, it'll ask me what, you know, yes or no. And if you watch, if I run this, did you load the CNC? If I hit yes, if I go data 23, look, it returns a one. If I hit forward and it go, I go no, it returns a zero. So, 
So this is where you would do your conditional branching after this. So instructions, if select, so conditional branching, if I hit if, um, register 23, um, register 23 equals on or one, then call program. Like, so call, we'll just say call linear because then the job is there. So if I do this, hit forward, did I load the CNC? Yes. Then I could do my job or vice versa. If I didn't, then it will load, you know, it could be a call load program. So if I change this to a zero and hit forward, did you do I Did I load the CNC? No. Hit enter. Now it may load the CNC and, um, and I could do an, another statement. So to if whoops, 23 is one, uh, you know, constant of one, then you can just uh, jump to a you, know, you can jump label back to like before because you know and just wait for the next time. Um, so at command insert instruction. You know so forward. So shift forward. Did I load the CNC? No. Enter. Loads, loads the CNC, and then um, I can put another jump label, then I hit yes. But it stays on there because it keeps that prompt there because it's just waiting. So once I hit no, boom. So there's things that you can do to keep this thing running, but notice when I, when I do it this way, that prompt stays there because it's just, you know, it's kind of a always present thing because I keep jumping label back. It's not giving any time for processing. Um, so there's that's how you use the prompt, yes, no. And let's just go in. I'm going to um, do the last one that we talked about. So let's go in and do the, and this is a good we use for the select. So list menu. List menu, you do your choice, constant of, I think we did three. Let's go back to list menu. Let's go to um, setup, menu utility, select from the list, um, detail, yeah, three. Um, so I gotta go edit, three, enter, and then you still gotta put in the register where you wanna put information in. So let's just do 45. Why? Because I feel like it. Um, and this is a good a, a good place to use that select statement. So if select um, select r forty five, you know if it's a constant of one, call you know circle uh, circle. Then if if select state, then we go select here a constant of two call linear and okay call linear and then call you know if so you know if select statement of three whoops constant constant of three call joint which is our triangle and then lastly if select, else, jump label, one. It's not going to do anything, but at least you have something else in there. Uh, touch up, not touch up, uh, edit command, insert one. And then you can put your jump label in there. And so now if I hit forward, which one do you want to make? Well, I will do square. Enter, 
and it ran the job and ends. If you want to keep asking, then you got to put another jump label in there because this jump label is only there. Or uh, so, but if I run this again, which do I want? Please play selection here. Let me do triangle. Hit enter and look, did that for, and I can do square circle, and then boom, circle. So those are those are some fun little some fun little utility menus. You can also, you know, so lastly, you know, just to, I'm just gonna demonstrate. You can go in and if I go edit, you can create. I just didn't have time to really create this through, but if I hit if I go in and do and go in and do instruction and then macro. Whoops, wrong one. Instruction macro. Um, I not only you know I can go in here and do status menu, and then I can call up my my status menu job that I have. Um, so status menu constant of one. And if I want that job, I could just you know when that comes up, it, I can actually set up a whole current program, current routine, current line. I can have that set up. That's already kind of already preloaded with this one. You can set all this up too. Um, and lastly, the other, the other one that you can do is macro, um, operator entry, mentory, again, choice of constant of one, you know, if it forward, you can actually get someone to say, do you, you know, how many parts are in the shoot? You know, you can say three, three in the shoot, give it a range. And then have a way of whoops, kind of way of, of documenting stuff at one time. So, and I can change that, you know, I can hit six, enter, and I can say no, enter, and done. So there's some other things that you can do. Now, you, again, you have to store with operator entry entry where something where you want that array to go. But these are some fun things you can play with. Um, and I hope that's helpful. Sorry, I kept, kept getting interrupted in this, this video and uh, maybe a little rough, but the information is still good. All right.